when it comes to ChatGPT, there are two biggest issues that companies are trying to solve. Number one, the responses that you get from ChatGPT are hallucinated. Oftentimes, you need to go through a fact check to make sure the response you're getting are accurate. So how do you make sure that the response are accurate, number one? Number two, how do you ensure the data privacy? How do you make sure that the data you're uploading are staying secure? And to have that transparency behind the scene, how it's really being used, right? Because at the end of the day, what you put in the chat GPT is often a black box for many companies. And as a result, it's hard to trust. Well, there is a solution, and the solution is to build a rag-based application, which is retrieval augmented generated applications. And you might have heard about the uh, framework called Langchain. Langchain is basically a framework that allows you to build multi-model AI agents that allows you to build the applications, the AI application that can solve two biggest problems. Number one, the hallucination. Number two, the data privacy. So without further ado, in this video, I will walk you through how I'm going to be building a Langchain application using a no-code tool called Flowwise AI. And this allows you to build this uh, Langchain applications, as well as we're going to be touching into the vector database and uh, rag-based application. So let's get started. Um, Assuming you have already installed Flowwise AI on your terminal, on your computer, or your machine, I meant, um, let's go ahead and build a new application. So the first thing you want to start with is a conversational retrieval. And I like to either, I mean, you can search or you can just go through here and um, into the filters and find it. The conversational retrieval QA chain which is a document based. This is what I like to use uh, for our chatbot. So in this, two things needs to happen. Number one, you need to set up a vector store database that allows you to take your um, your document, or I'm sorry, your data, chunk it up, put it in the vector database, and you have to add embedding to ensure that those data are AI formatted. Is what I like to call it, it's a made of term. All right. And then of course you need to have a chat model on top of it that can run and allows you to make those uh, queries and responses, synthesize the responses, right? So um, let's start with adding a chat model because um, we will definitely need one. Um, so for the chat model, I like to use OpenAI. Um, they do a phenomenal job with that. Uh, and then uh, we're just going to use LLMs. Let's go through this search. And then there is a section called chat models. Scroll down through the open AI. There we go. We'll put that in. And of course you have to go ahead and add your credentials here. I already have it here. So I'm just going to select one from the model standpoint. I like to work with chat GPT-4 does a pretty good job. And from the temperature, I want this temperature to be less, um, hallucinated or less creative, the lower the temperature, it means the stricter it will get to finding the response or less creative. So as a result, it will be less hallucinated. So I'm going to put it at four, maybe. There we go. Four makes perfect sense. And then what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and connect this to this database. And then I will need a document. So we need a vector store. So for vector store, um, I'm sure you probably heard about uh, Pinecone. Pinecone allows you to build serverless vector database on a cloud, and you would be able to um, create indexes and store data into it. But we'll touch base on that later. But today, what we're going to be doing is using, and I'm just going to move this over here. And today, what we would like to do is use the vector storage that Flowwise offers internal basically. So in memory vector store is what we're going to be using. And we want to store that here. And then we of course needs to upload a document. And for document, there are multiple things you can do. Um, and that would be under tools. So I will be using just a simple PDF document uploader. And or actually, no, I should just search. It makes it easy. There we go. PDF file, document loader. And we want that document to be connected here. And so in this video, I'm going to be uploading Tesla's Q3 financial report. And let me pull that up. All right, so this is what I'm talking about. So this Q4 Tesla, uh, Q4 for 2003. 
financial report. So we're going to be uploading this. We're going to be putting into the vector database, chunking it, making sure and embedding it to make sure our LLM can only answer questions through this document. So without further ado, let's dive into that. All right, so here we have that Tesla PDF file that I just uploaded. And we of course need a text splitter here because what it, this is where the chunking mechanism comes in. And I'm gonna be using recursive character text splitter. And I would like to chunk this into, you know, I'm gonna do 500 chunk. And the chunk overlap is going to be 50, uh, let's just do 20. All right, so that's basically what I'm, I'll be breaking the document into 500 characters chunk. And then uh, for embedding, I will be using OpenAI's embedding because it makes things easier. So let me go ahead and when I say make things easier, I've only used embedding from OpenAI, so that's the only point of reference I have. Uh, but let me go ahead and pull this up. And there are, of course, many options that you could choose from. And then again, you need to have your credentials, which I already have here, so I'm just gonna use that. And there are different models for embedding. Uh, this is one of the most popular, the older one. There, of course, you can use larger and smaller models if you like, but I'm just gonna you go with the ADA002 and then put that into an embedding. There we go. And then of course, I want to return the source data. So this is where it will cite the information that you're getting to ensure that, um, or you can do a fact check, making sure that this is exactly what needs to happen. So now that we have this chain built, and this is basically our AI agent that is going to answer questions through the document that we uploaded here, which is Tesla's financials, about 32 pages, right? And so let's see how this operates. And actually, there's one more thing I'd like to add. Uh, there is a, a product called Langsmith that just got released um, a couple months ago, and this is from Langchain. But this allows you to make your LLM products more production ready, where you can go and um, um, test your product and to be able to get um, accuracy on the processing behind the scenes. So it basically opens up and so it doesn't keep your app as a black box anymore. And you can, you'll have much more control over how it's actually been processed, the latencies and whole nine yards. So I'll, I'll explain that here in this video. So let me go ahead and create a new project for this one. So going back, um, first, well, first we need to save this. And so I'm just gonna call this rag. All right, and then let's go ahead and configure our length smith, which is going to be here. I already have connected my credentials, so I'll just go ahead and put that in. And then the product name, we're just gonna call it Rank Demo App. And we're gonna turn this on. Basically, it's an error handling tool that allows you to uh, monitor your LLMs. All right, uh, so now that we have that connected, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And then you also need to upsert the data. So let's go ahead and upsert the data into your vector database. And so there it is. So here's the 99 chunks being added from this document. And of course, that's just for your reference, I'm just gonna close it. And then, then that also getting embedded and added to it. So now if I go, and open the chat here, and I'm just gonna move this back here again. Let's go ahead and type in, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and find the exact information from here. So let's see, uh, models three wide delivery in 2019. So we're gonna ask, what was a model three wide delivery in 2019? And hopefully it works, so let's see. And this is another great part. So it did not work. And because of the chunking and how you do it, it may not run according to that. But the point is, as you see, the model did not hallucinate. It gave you a response saying, hmm, not sure, because that's kind of how it's been programmed behind the scene. As you can see, there's some system prompts been made and it has a clear instruction that, hey, if you don't know the answer, just say, I'm not sure but do not come up with the answer, right? So that's the system prompt, which you can of course customize. But let's go ahead and ask a model that will of course have a training data. So for an example, if I go and ask, what was a total revenue in Q4 2022 
I believe model should give us that answer. So what was a total revenue in Q4 2022? And let's see what it comes back with. All right, so here it is. So it came back with uh, the Q4 2022 was 24.38 million, which is 24 billion. So let's do our fact check. And if I go back, there it is, 24318. And if you really wanted to see what happened behind the scene, you can, of course, there's other resources that it came with. So if you click on it, it then tells you exactly where they where this LLM pulled the data from. So you have that information right there, as well as uh, remember the Langsmith we just connected. So there it is. So if I click on it and then the call I made, it's now telling us what was the latency for that particular call, how much token has been used. And that's another great thing about this tool. Like oftentimes you wanna know what was the cost to that AI model. I mean, basically we're calling OpenAI for uh, LLM as well as we're calling OpenAI for um, embedding and so we wanted to understand the cost behind it and this gives you that information that that last call we made cost me about 0 0.023 cents or whatever that is so if i click on it now you can see from the uh lang chain standpoint how it went through the runnable mode how what tool it call like it find the document uh then it made call to the open ai then it went through the vector store to retrieve it and then it had a runnable sequence to go and give you the results. So this is how I would build a rag-based application that allows us to make sure that number one, the model is fetching data from the data source you have uploaded and you get the accurate information, All right? So hope this video helps. And if you have any additional question, please feel free to reach out to me and um, I wish you all the best with your next AI project. Good luck.